Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Darksiders. Last time we got the Chronomancer from Samael, and that's gonna help us open the way up to the third dungeon, the Ashlands, the home of the Stygian, and it's gonna serve as our initial puzzle-solving tool while we're in that dungeon. And subsequent dungeons, for that matter. Uh, you can guess from the name that the Chronomancer is a tool that we're gonna be using to stop time in specific places. You don't have complete freedom to stop time whenever you want while using it, but uh, you'll get the gist of it soon enough. That doesn't matter right now, though. We're not heading to the Ashlands straight away. We're not heading to the dry road, which leads to the Ashlands yet. We're actually going to meet up with Volgrim so I can do a few things. One, I want to upgrade the Tremor Gauntlet finally, now that I have the chance to, and I think Meteor Launch is the one I want. And I might as well just pump this thing up all the way while I have the souls to do so. Uh, but yeah, Meteor Punch is the one I really want the most. It's a really valuable thing to have. It's, uh, it's the skill that I was talking about in the previous dungeon. Of course, let's see. Um, I guess I'll save up another... Actually, no impact rounds. I didn't realize I didn't have that yet. So the gun's more powerful now. Uh, we also want to be using the Serpent Hole to head to, where is it, should be around here, the Choking Grounds. That's the other reason that we, uh, came to Volgrim instead of going right to the Dry Road. What we want to be doing next is using this Serpent Road to take us out to the Choking Grounds, the area right before Tiamat's dungeon, the first one we did. So we can get some things that we missed, uh, before intentionally, mind you, uh, some things that we didn't really have access to before. And more importantly than just picking up a couple of collectibles I could backtrack for later, if I really wanted to, um, I've been itching to get around to this. We're gonna meet somebody that you've all been asking about. Um, let's see. Well, we're on our way there. Now that we've unlocked most of the moves for all three weapons, you've probably started to notice that all three of our primary weapons, the Scythe, the Chaos Eater, and the Tremor Gauntlet now, share pretty much the same move sets and inputs for those special moves. Uh, they all look a little bit different. They all function slightly different, but they're kind of identical. Uh, they're all kind of the same things. Like, they all have a version of the Stinger, which is dash and attack. They all have a high time variant, which is lock on, hold back on the stick and attack for kind of a launcher. They all have air combos now. They all have a charged attack that plays out if you hold the attack button down. They all have a version of the Chaos Eater's home run swing where you hold RB and attack while you're standing still and charge up a big, strong, heavy attack. They all have that stuff. Uh, the Tremor Gauntlet happens to have one of the most useful of those special abilities, though. Um, I'm not even sure if I should really bother fighting you, but... Might as well, I kind of want to get used to uh, a couple new moves now. Actually, ooh. Nah. Let's just finish them off nice and efficiently. Ah, I was stuck in an animation so I couldn't quite get away. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, while we're up here, we already got the Wrath Shard up here, but there's a Life Shard up there, a Heart Piece. Uh, if we chain the fire onto the bomb on the red crystal at the top of the demonic growth, lets us get up to the next floor. And Ward does not want to touch the ground. The floor is hot lava. Does not want to go on that. Uh, we could break this now that we have the Tremor Gauntlet. We didn't have this when we were first going through the choking ground, so we couldn't have gotten that lifestone shard. And that gives us another full heart container. So we have another bar of life. That's cool. It's cool that we got that. We're gonna get some souls in these very nice looking, almost titanium chests. Wonder if that just signifies that they uh, contain more souls than your average chest in the game. Uh, that's all cool, but really we could have left that for much later in the game because I think we're gonna wind up having to backtrack to the choking grounds again uh, in the end game anyway. We could have left that stuff for later. No, um, the real reason that I wanted to come back to the Choking Ground is for a character that you all want me to, uh, to say hi to. Someone very, very special and someone who makes rare appearances in this game. Uh, by the way, I kept forgetting to show this. This is why, uh, the Meteor Punch or the Meteor Launch, whatever it was called, is the most valuable 
uh, special skill that you can purchase for the Tremor Gauntlet. Kept forgetting to show it. It has the most useful stinger because you can cancel the animation with a jump so you don't lose all your momentum at the end of the animation. And here we go, it's Wicked K. Wicked K, the dapper gentleman zombie with ferociously good nature and a cane sword. I love this guy. Uh, but first, we should really get ourselves busy with clearing out the other Wicked here. I didn't... Uh, I don't think they should have been spawning. That's... Hmm. Oh, well, they're not going to be too much of a barrier. Uh, now we can have a good one-on-one -on -one duel. Let's fight like gentlemen. Uh, Wicked K is not too hard. He can hit pretty tough. He can hit pretty hard, but he's not that tough. Um, plus, he has a real predictable pattern. He doesn't have that much range. He's easy to avoid. Uh, you just wait for that three-hit combo, and that's the coolest thing ever. Disappears through his top hat. Wicked K. Wicked K. I believe there are a total of three Wicked K fights. Maybe more, maybe less. Not entirely sure about that. We're going to try to do all of them either way. Uh, every time you beat him, he gives you a bunch of souls. And his first fight especially isn't that hard. He gains new moves every time you encounter him. But uh, I don't actually think he's that bad. A lot of people say that he hits like a Mack truck. Um, he hits pretty hard on Apocalyptic. I still don't think he's that hard to beat. Uh, the K in his name, by the way, stands for Killington, according to uh, some file names. It's never said explicitly in-game, but... He's a joke character that was put into the game during, I think, the last month of development. And he's kind of a, a good-natured rib, a, a, a caricature poking fun at uh, Vigil's British programmers. That sentence didn't quite want to come out, but I got it out there. Alright, now that we're back in the Scalding Gallows, uh, we can just head right on over to these Blue Crystals, which, uh, before we had done the second dungeon, the hollows, uh, we didn't have a means to break these crystals. Now we do, and this is conveniently the path to the Ashlands, the third dungeon of the game. Uh, this is known as the Dry Roads Access Tunnel. Uh, so we have another sewer leading to kind of a conduit area, which will then lead to the dungeon. So we have the Dry Roads Access Tunnel, which will lead out to the Dry Roads, and that will ultimately let us get to the Ashlands. Uh, the Ashlands is a very different kind of dungeon in that it's uh, much more of an open-air dungeon, so it's not immediately apparent that it, it's not like a temple-style dungeon. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, let's mess with the uh, Tremor Gauntlet's moves. If there's anything other than the bat here... No, there's just a bunch of bats. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I just want an excuse to do this. Uh, that's the Tremor Gauntlet's variation of the, uh, the home run swing that you do with the Chaos Eater. Just hold RB down. Using Chronospheres. Okay. Uh, unfortunately... The game treats you like you're dumb, so you always have to trigger this cutscene. You can't skip it. Uh, you always have to trigger that before you can actually go on to using the Chronosphere, which you do by um, first lifting the gate up and then attacking these really obvious blue glowy Chrono Points uh, with a crossblade. And that uh, utilizes the Chronomancer. Chronospheres are the things you attack with the Chronomancer, right? I'll probably be mixing those two up a lot. Uh, we get a single Flesh Burster. Good, I remember the name. Awesome. Uh, so, since he's all alone, let's mess with some Tremor Gauntlet stuff. Oh. Nah, I want you held in place. Yeah, there we go. He's going to explode, though. Uh, and you do not have any kind of invincibility frames all in the middle of that animation. Which I was kind of maybe banking on, but at least I find that out now, as opposed to a situation where that could get me in a lot of trouble. Alright, we'll keep using that. Um, I don't know if I cut myself on, off on that explanation to why that's so good. Um, uh, but the, uh, the Tremor Gauntlet version of the Stinger is really nice because, uh, you can 
cancel the animation of the Stinger, uh, unlike the Chaos Eaters version of that. So you don't lose all your momentum after the jump uh, at the end of the animation, which means you can dash, you can do a meteor punch, and then you can jump, and you can just repeat those three uh, inputs over and over, and it gives you much more quick, uh, much more quick and uh, much more fluid motion. Honestly, I don't know how much faster that is, but it just feels a whole lot more fluid, which... Uh, maybe it's a placebo effect, but... If it is, I don't care. I prefer that. Uh, if you really wanted to optimize your movement, though, you could do a trick similar to the Ocarina of Time Z-Target and Sidestep or Backdash thing, but... Uh, I'm not speedrunning this game. If I was, this game would take, like, 45 minutes because it's remarkably broken, and I might show off some of the many ways in which this game is broken um, in a bonus episode. I don't know. Yeah. But there's no sense in that kind of, like, really intense min-maxing of uh, movement in a non-speedrun, because uh, you wouldn't get a really good view of the scenery, and it's not fun. Uh, these kind of teal glowing angels are fallen angels, or fallen hellguard, uh, which essentially, I believe, just makes them demons. Fallen angels are just demons, right? Like Lucifer. Ah, I didn't quite get all of them. That 180 orbital strike is a really nice animation, though. This is the animation I wanted. Uh, oh god, I have to get used to, uh, which direction on the d-pad my gun is so I can get some nice juggle combos going you're, you're, you'll have to forgive me if I'm not my normal self today still getting over um, a little bit being sick past couple days so apologies if this is a bit less on point than usual uh, over here before we go and collect anything here in the dry road we can go and visit Volgrim and make sure that I don't miss him because I I think I already missed Volgrim's location in the Drowned Pass, otherwise I probably would have popped back at the Drowned Pass for a little bit to collect a few things I missed there, but we'll be back in the Drowned Pass uh, eventually, because we have to go there during the endgame to do a little endgame collectathon anyway. Uh, I probably should get that Volgrim location, like, maybe off camera before it comes down to that anyway. But up here, we have an artifact. We have a bunch of stuff around here, I think. Yeah, we have a soldier's artifact. Uh, if you come down here... This is really not that well hidden. I don't feel like you should be able to see that yet. But it's, um... It's a silhouette of an anvil with a glowing orange thing on top of it. Uh, that's part of that endgame collectathon. That's part of a, a super weapon we're going to be building later on. Hey, Fire Hydrant. Uh, so let's see, we got the life chest, we got the artifact, found Vulgarum. I think that's all there is to do in this stretch of the dry road. Uh, there is one more item that we're going to be finding here in the dry road as we head more towards the Ashlands, but that's a little bit deeper into this tunnel. Oh, hey, Fallen Bats? They have the same color scheme as the Fallen Hellguard, uh, but they're really just the same kind of keys that we've been fighting with the same fireball attack, just a different color. Really, just poor palette swap enemies. Oh, I don't think I want to head straight down the middle of this tunnel. Otherwise, I have to fight a bunch of shit. It's mostly just Wicked plus one of those, the big beasts that we met in the hollows. Which I don't feel like dealing with. There's really no big benefit to dealing with them other than a couple of souls. They don't chase you down here. Uh, here, I kind of think this is a smart puzzle. It's not really a brain teaser or anything, but I think this is just... It's smartly implemented, so we shoot the thing to get it to drop the crate, and then we hang out on it, because it recovers, and it just grabs the crate again. I think that's smart, I like that. Ah, uh, this is a big special chest, so... It can only be one of a couple of things. In this case, it's the Carnage Enhancement, which generates extra chaos for the Chaos Form meter. Um, and I don't know if I want to put that on anything, to be honest. It doesn't have any passive bonuses. Um, 
the wording on that confuses me a little bit. I'll have to look into that. But for now, I'm actually kind of happy with this loadout I have. I have a Weapon Master still on the Chaos Eater for the additional damage. Uh, at the beginning of the episode, you saw I swapped Harvester onto the Scythe. So it reaps a couple of extra souls. And I put, uh, what's it called? Combat Lore on the Tremor Gauntlet so it gains weapon experience a little bit quicker. Uh, there's really no reason for there to be three bomb flowers on the vine over here because you only need to throw one and you only need to destroy one thing. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything in this drain pipe and that I can make this jump and I can. I know I've had some some very funky problems with the platforming in this so far, so I'm like being extra careful now. Maybe too careful. Uh, let's move on. I think we have just about exited. Oh no, there's still this. Uh, so we have one, I believe one more room before we get out into the dungeon. Or kind of a pre-dungeon area. Not if I don't jump though. I think I might have just jumped too late or the input got eaten. I'm gonna go with the former, though. I don't think my inputs are just getting eaten like that. Ah, uh, do it right this time. Do my uh, Cirque du Soleil over here. Get onto the vine. And we are on our way. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna go back for it now. Because I'm super lazy and it's not worth it. If I had gone right instead of going immediately left there, down this pathway, I believe at the back of the room there is a chest full of souls. There's nothing too, in, too important back there yet. Um, when I get a later dungeon item, I'll be back there anyway for, uh, I think, a wrath chest back there? I can't get to it yet, though, so it's, uh, it, it's moot. Oh, why does it want to switch to the Tremor Gauntlet? There we go. And we got another life chest. We're already halfway to our next full heart container. Already, we got uh, a, a f life upgrade near the beginning of the episode, and we're already halfway to another one. Which I do believe we'll be getting by the end of the dungeon, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Unless... Uh, God. Now, I, now I'm not sure if there's... Uh, actually that many life chests in the upcoming dungeon, if any at all. I know there are a couple of artifacts. I believe there is at least one wrath container, and I think there... No, I don't think there's any more armor pieces until the fourth dungeon. I'll have to double check on some of this stuff, because we're not going to be getting through the entire dungeon this episode. So, we have sandworms that we have to deal with. Uh, the Stygian is kind of the queen of the sandworms, or the king. Can't remember its gender. But, uh, even the small ones are nasty. And this is where the Chronomancer comes into play, in these Chronospheres. We could slow down time so we can cross the sand dunes. Uh, and since I have no frame of reference for Dune, since I've never actually read it, even though I have a big copy still sitting on my shelf over there that I should read someday. Samael wasn't kidding about those worms, and the Stygian's supposed to be the mean one. Yeah, no frame of reference for that other than sandworms and spices and the gum jabar. So instead I'll be opting for uh, the much classier, or much trashier, Beetlejuice animated series references. Oh no, Lydia, a sandworm. I hope you enjoyed that reference as much as I did. Oh, we got more fallen Hellguard. Um, let me get down off the cliff. And we can deal with you guys. Ooh, yeah. Uh, man, still feeling. Yeah. I don't have it in me to get creative and stylish with the combos today as much as I would like to. Uh, yeah, that, that, that'll be my styling for today. Minor, minor gun juggles. Do my gun kata. And be out of here. No, I want to finish him off. I haven't seen this animation in forever. I love this one. It's one of my favorite executions. 
All the executions are so fluid the way you flow into them from your normal combat moveset. It's part of why I like it so much. Alright, I believe I could just make this drop. No reason to climb down there. Ooh, um, you know what? I have a much better way of dealing with you guys now. This, yeah, this works perfectly. I wonder if that would worked on the locusts back in the hollow, I guess. Pretty sure the blue ones are the stronger version of the locusts. All right, more dunes, more chronospheres, more to do in the next episode where we will really, really start to get a good feel for uh, the Ashlands, the third dungeon. Ah, oh, this is a cool location. All covered in soot and ash. Very crown of the Iron King. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.